Hi there, and welcome back. So let's do a performance test now of a, let's say, not so small application in OpenFont to see what happens. So this is the one that we're going to run. We're not going to run that classical or uh, the driven cavity. So this is the case, the driver model. This is a classical case now for the automotive industry. So here you have the link, okay, where you can find I have it here. So basically we're going to run this geometry F, the, the fastback. Okay, so here you have all the papers. There is a lot of data in this case, a very nice case. Also you have the link to the geometry. So we're going to use the clean geometry, but you have different there. So it's up to you. So we have the file. So what we're going to run now a simple simulation using brands at uh, this given velocity and see what happens though so from the point of view of the performance of the hardware, but also see the results, okay? Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going into details about open phone, okay? Then there are some other videos that we were, were explaining this. So here you have some reference about the mesh. So we're going to use a quartz mesh, by the way. We're not going to use the final one that is something about, I think, five million, six million cells. We're going to run with something much smaller, but still we're going to get good results. Okay, but what is interesting now when setting all the cases that you need to be as close as possible now to the physics. So in this case, when setting boundary conditions, see that the ground, no, the actual case that you, you, you have, the, the ground is moving, no. Then also you have the wheel rotating. So you need to, uh, uh, to define all these boundary conditions, find the rotation point. So in another video, we're going to see how to post-process and edit this geometry and get some reference values and so on. Okay, so what is interesting in this case, well, also we can get all these structures if you're using Q-Criteria and all these nice plots and that <clears throat> we are, you can, you, you have the option to, to do the comparison different setups. So see that you have no rotating wheels, no moving ground, rotating wheels, moving ground, and so on. Okay, so see that each each setup configuration will give you different results. So it's important to have you know, the right boundary conditions. So the let's say the most realistic one is this case. Okay. And then the comparison now with experimental values. There is a lot of uh, variance now when you look at the like the experimental values, you now different minimum, maximum values, but see that the values computed are well within you now <clears throat> the values in the experiment. So let's run this case. Okay. So <clears throat> just to remind you that you need to launch launch uh, your WSL distribution. So you can go to the applications, for instance, <clears throat> you, you install the same as we, we have the open source. So should, <clears throat> should have it here, or if you have Ubuntu, should be under the U, whatever. Okay, so let me go here. You can launch it, but also you can use the terminal window. This is the one I recommend. And then you go here and choose the one that you want to launch. Okay, so I will launch this one, I will close here. So also to point out that when you go here in the in your applications menu in Windows and you look at for the virtual machine, see that applications that you install there also you can access from here, terminals, okay, some, some applications, okay. So this is quite neat, quite cool. So let's run this case. So in the video description, you have the link to download all the files. So let me go here, okay, and this is driver. Okay, so this is the case that we're going to run. And <clears throat> just to remind you that you can access your virtual machine and also you can explore the files, take a look at your files, there's no problem. So it should be here. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, so see that we have three cases, even dry fire quartz uh, compressible. So you have a quartz mesh and a five mesh. So just to mentioned something about this files when you enter you will see many uh this is quick is to run automatically so you have this one to run it will generate the mesh this one will only convert it so you save that step and also you see this folder here you already have a solution so you need to run everything so you just can extract that solution and, and do the plotting so using this script will just <clears throat> do this setup the same happens in the fine case you have the solution 
Okay, and also you have the locks files here. Okay, so let's run the case that I fair coerce. Okay, I'm not going to details what is inside. I'm just going to run it and let's see what happens. So let's do that first. Okay, so there is another thing that I also like to install another terminal window and I like to install this one. So you can install that one. So you know how to use zipper. <clears throat> and okay so if you look so see that if you are familiar with OpenSUSE probably you you know what, what is this so what I like this one that you can open different tabs you have it here so it's so I will put this one behind and I will work in this one okay so remember that OF9 you load open phone and we're go I'm going to work in the quartz case. Okay. Also here, let me go in the quartz case. And so let's take a look a, a little bit at this script just to make it clear. So is you, this is the one I'm going to run, run. And so basically it's running. Okay, so I, I, I like to put it plain and script without any pro programming. If you are a beginner, it's quite easy to follow. So this one basically is going to run another script. So as you see here, you have <laughs> this one that is doing the mesh conversion. So it's doing some cleaning, mesh conversion, then renaming. So as you can see, all the commands that you have in your <coughs> standalone Linux installation, native installation, everything works fine. So we already know that it's a pure, a pure native Linux installation, but just to stress that. And <clears throat> and let me go run solver here fluent. So it's running now. That means run solver fluent that is running the solver now from, from the mesh that was converted in fluent format. And let me do a small modification here. So I would put six core. Okay, you have access to six core and automatically will uh, <coughs> update everything. So when you read when you see these scripts, you will see that you have this one. So you just define there the the number of cores that you want to use, and then automatically now see here that you have found the dictionary will update the decomposed part. The same, <coughs> the same will, <coughs> will happen here. So let me go. So you have that script, so you can go and put six or whatever. Okay. So in this case, it's commented because it is here. No, that is already done the modification. You do it here, but can do it twice, not, not a problem. So I'm going to simply run this case and I'm going to monitor also the resources. So to run this case, you go SH run all fluent. Okay. And that's all. It will start to do its magic. Let me detach this tab. And let me go here. I will put here H top and see that <coughs> we have our resources. Remember that I changed my memory to 20 gigs when I'm accessing all the cores that I have. So I have six physical cores, but that's Windows hyper treating. So be careful. Do not run hyper treating open phone because you are not going to get any performance. Honestly speaking, I have seen sometimes in some cases that you get some performance, but it shouldn't be the case, but it's up to you do your own benchmarking. So see that at this point <coughs> running, no problem. And for instance, you want also some people likes to plot residuals on the fly. So in my case, we already have Python install. Python plot watcher. And I want to plot my residuals. Okay, so a lot of people likes to, to print this one. And also in, in the directory, you will find you said you find this new plot script. These are also some scripts to plot uh, the drag coefficient, lift coefficient, or all the coefficients. So you might need to, uh, to adapt it according to your case, know from where the, the information has been taken. But in this case, it's already ready to go. So you just go like this new plot, new plot script, um, plot coef, and it's plotting on the coefficients. So now let me put. 
So quite cool, all exactly the same windows as you as if you were working in your Linux installation. Okay, and let me put here hardware resources. Okay, so see that it's running smoothly, not a big deal. So at this point, we just need to wait. So the case will run a thousand iterations. So let it run and let's see what happens. And then we we'll open part of it and do some post processing. So let's wait a little bit. So see you later. Okay, so the simulation is done in my computer, so it's uh, something about 110 minutes. Okay, so we have the simulation, the solution, everything. So look at that. We have the convergence monitors here. Okay, residuals. <coughs> everything went fine. And here we were monitoring drag coefficients. So as you recall, the values were something 0 0.26 whatever so we need to compute an average here but it's about that value it's a little bit higher because the mesh it's a little bit quartz so it's not resolving well but just to point out also that here okay this is the script but there is another script there that no plot that compute the statistic or if you want to see you know the the steps how to compute the statistics in, in new and new plot this is how you do it so basically here starting from 50 compute the average let me see that i want to compute it starting from 500 and <coughs> you go there and look at that two 500 records and it's something about 0 0.28 okay so it's around the, the ballpark so this is it okay so we have Nice result. Okay, here we have Python. I can close it also. I don't need it anymore. So <clears throat> I can close my windows here. Here we have HTAP, uh, HTAP and all simulation is done. I also can close this one. And at this point, okay, you see that run like in a normal installation, we can do the post processing. So let me launch part of home built in. So remember, I didn't compile part of a uh, part of fun. Okay, I induced in the system library. And again, I don't recommend you to compile part of you know, with OpenFun because they have too many dependencies. So the, <coughs> the, the, 
the system library will do the same. And actually, this paraphrase is a script that will ca call that library that part of your installation compilation that comes with OpenFont. So let me go here, the compose case, apply. Also, just to confirm something that I don't recall how many cells I have in this mesh. So you see that it already opened there, everything fine. So let me go here and I think I have check mesh log check mesh and I will check mesh telling that look at that we have something a little bit more than 600,000 cells so it's not so small okay and now we can go and do the normal post processing okay so this is rather a small domain also so if you run the larger case it's a larger domain you have different bugs so this is to keep it low so let's see that the results is to be quite good so now let, <coughs> let's do a little bit post processing. So I will go here to play a little bit, not to put many things together. So I will select everything there. Let me add a couple of filters here. Let me extract block. I want to extract this one. Okay. And in this one, I want to apply ISO surfaces of what I think I compute the Q criterion. So I have the instantaneous and the min. I would like to look at the min value and I will put something like 10 there to capture the surfaces with that, <coughs> with that value. And this is what we have. So quite cool. Okay, so see that everything is working smoothly, integrated very fine. So yeah, cannot complain. Same performance as in Linux and actually already run the same case and prepare a uh, processor in a native Linux installation. Okay, the other process, uh, processor in the workstation is a little bit more powerful than this one, but the time is something about the same time here, so. Okay, let me add another block here. And I want to have here the wheels and the body. Okay, so I put it there and this is a pressure fill and just wanted to show you if i put velocity look at that actually the wheels we impose a boundary condition to have you no know, the rotation there that it have an effect as you have uh, you see you have seen you now in the at the beginning i show you the the case presentation also you can see that the mesh can be improved a lot so the fine mesh that you have there it is much finer than this and it will give you better resources. I think it will be something about 0 0.26. And let me put also the ground plane. I see that the ground also uh, should be, okay, it should be mean, this one. It is also moving now with a velocity 30. And yeah, this is it, okay. So if I add transparency, working nice. So it will be a little bit slower here, but everything working as expected. Now it's mostly, so we have going in this series of videos through now. Installation of uh, Windows existing Linux and configuration, exporting, importing all you know, your distribution, installing open phone. And now we did this benchmarking case. Uh, in the next video, probably I will show you how also Dockerize this stuff use Docker, but you don't need it just for general knowledge because you already have this distribution that you can install in your machine. But using Docker also, I will put this one in Docker Hut and you can download the latest updates. But it's the same with the <laughs> distribution that you that we're sharing in the link in the video description. So with this being said, I can close here. That's all for this video. Thank you very much for the attention. See you next time. Bye.